Shalom. All praises, honors, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kodash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, those are the men that taught me the truth of the Bible through the Holy Spirit, and Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kodash, Bakatham, to the elect of Israel that scattered around the four corners of the globe. Now, um, I want to say Salakia first and foremost because I'm doing this video on my phone, on my iPhone, and uh, you know, you might not be able to hear me as clearly. Um, so it's so lucky for that, you know, forgive me for that, you know, um, but I want to do it on this format, you know, I want to do it, I want to do this lesson rather, I want to do this lesson where, whereby you can see my face, uh, you can see my eyes, you know, hopefully you can see the sincerity uh, in my demeanor, in my eyes, if you will, you know, because uh, this lesson is important to me, right, and it's pretty much regarding uh, this whole fiasco concerning... <clears throat> Bishop Nathaniel Ben Israel of the IUIC, okay? IUIC standing for Israel United in Christ, which is a Hebrew Israelite camp, uh, pretty much based out here in North America. You know, they're a prominent Israelite group out here in North America, but they're also um, around the world, okay? And pretty much right now you've got their leader, like I said, Bishop Nathaniel Ben Israel, as he's known, um pretty much downplaying the name of our power okay and when i say our i'm referring to our so-called blacks latinos and native americans who are the hebrew israelites okay and um what's happening right now concerning nathaniel is that you know this is just my personal discernment through the spirit you know yahweh bash now shy that's who he refers to as Most High and Christ and that's who the world ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ you know according to this scripture here let me get this real quick according to the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 and let me see verse 21 the heavenly father the Lord right who we know as Yahweh are here at Great Millstone beginning with the apostles on down our lord said that he was going to send um stumbling blocks amongst our people and why is that because pretty much the heavenly father and his son uh, they're not dealing with the whole nation of israel all right as it says in the book of romans 11 verse 7 israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for but the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded okay and pretty much the way the lord is going to blind the majority of israel two-thirds to be exact over here in north america uh, pursuant to zechariah 13 verse 8 two parts therein shall be cut off and die the way the lord is gonna um blind them and be justified in destroying two-thirds of his people primarily primarily over here in north america is by sending forth um stumbling blocks um such as men like ben or i should say <laughs> bishop um Nathaniel Ben Israel, all right, alongside all these other characters that are claiming to be leaders of Israel, prophets, and servants of the Lord, all right. You know, you've got many out there, as our Lord said, you know, there shall be many uh, false prophets. So, you know, me personally, I believe um, Bishop Nathaniel Ben Israel is a false prophet, pursuant to what's that, Matthew 7, verse 15, 16. You know, I believe him to be a false prophet and uh, a stumbling block. And that's what it's going to say here, all right? Now, this is Jeremiah 6, verse 21. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, the people being the Israelites, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them, the neighbor and his friend shall perish and that's pretty much what's going to happen in these last days those of you that's not a part of the elect all right and i'm hoping me myself alongside you know my my fellow brothers that i believe have the truth you know beginning with the apostles the elders and the men of great millstone and like-minded righteous israelite men you know law willing you know we're collectively a part of the elect man all right those of us that's you know coming into this things sincerely pushing the word sincerely and doing the will of yahweh why yahweh shai all right which 
encompasses um, teaching his name and fearing you know their name right the name of the heavenly father Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai because there's great weight to those names right uh, so much so I can't even you know expound upon just how great those names are right now at least <laughs> you know anyway you know I don't want to make this too long of a lesson right I don't want to make this too long of a lesson so what I really want to do here in this lesson is pretty much invoke um, food for thought if you will and invoke conversation all right between us here at Great Millstone and you know you men that's a part of the IUIC okay and in order to do so I want to go to let me see the book of 2nd Ezra the second chapter uh, the point is really here in verse 47 but for context sake I'm gonna read from verse 38 on down all right now before we get into this this is a vision of our forefather uh, the prophet Ezra in the days of old all right this is like over 2000 500 years ago you know um, let me give you a ballpark number let's say between 500 400 BC if I'm not mistaken um, yeah basically this is a vision that Ezra is seen of uh, our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai crowning his men right his servants the prophets uh, the servant the same servants that you read about in the book of Revelation the seventh chapter um, and Revelation the 14th chapter uh, as a matter of fact when you go to that particular scripture in Revelation 14 let me go to it real quick because it speaks about how these particular men had the name of the Lord uh, in their foreheads okay so let me quickly go to that first and then I'll go back to I'll go back to second Ezra the second chapter um, bear with me here so this is second Ezra 4 of a tongue this is revelation 14 verse 1 it says and i looked and lo and this is a vision that uh, the apostle john on the isle of patmos saw you know concerning the the, the 144,000. you know this is around 96 a.d you know when he was sent to the salt mines right on the isle of patmos just to give you a brief history concerning what we're reading here this is revelation 14 verse 1 it says and i looked and lo a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and the lamb is referring to our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, the ultimate sacrifice for the nation of Israel. Right? It says, and with him, an hundred forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth and we all know who our Lord's going to come back to redeem all right or we should know by now you know you go to the book of um, Matthew 24 verse 31 and it tells you who our Lord and his angels are going to come back to, uh, to, to gather from the four corners of the earth, right? His elect, okay? The elect of the nation of Israel. You can marry that with uh, Matthew 1 verse 21. You know, it speaks about how our Lord, or I should say it speaks about how, you know, when um, the angel Gabriel gave the name unto our Lord's parents, you know, um, and he shall save his people from their sins right who's our lord's people the israelites okay so that's who our lord's going to come back for but it starts with the 144,000 servants okay uh, the governing body of the nation of israel if you will now from there let's go back to the book of second ezra chapter 2 like i said i'm going to read from verse 38 but the point is really in verse 47 all right this is where i want to raise you know my question this is where I want to raise uh, the topic of, of conversation concerning the name of our Lord, all right? So this is Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 38, you know, and what we're going to read about is what's known today as um, a coronation, okay, where people are being crowned. So it says, Arise up and stand 
Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. And we just read about that number, you know, when, when, we, went, when we went to the book of Revelation, the 14th chapter, 144,000, all right? That's the number of the, the, the governing body of Yasharala or of Israel. Verse 39, it says, Which are departed from the shadow of the world, and have received glorious garments of the Lord. Right, and that's the time that we're living in right now where these particular individuals, right, these particular men, the servants, the prophets, which I'm hoping to be, I'm not saying I am one of those men. No, law willing, I'm a part of the elect. Law willing, I'm a part of the 144,000. But one thing I know for sure is that we are living in that time and those men are here on the earth, okay? You know, the, the, um, our Lord said, you shall know them by the... Yeah, you should know them by their fruit. Okay, that's what our Lord said, you know, concerning his disciples, his men, if you will. So, that in itself is food for thought, okay? As it says, um, Revelation 19 and 10, um, the spirit of our Lord is, this, is the spirit of prophecy, okay? But that's a whole different topic, just giving you a reference point. Um, let me read it again, verse 39, 2nd Genesis 2, verse 39. Which are departed from the shadow of the world, which we're currently departing right now, all right, from this wicked society, this wicked kingdom, all right, which is being ruled by Esau, Edom, the so called white man, who is the man of sin, the wicked one, all right, the border of wickedness, pursuant to Malachi 1, verse 4, the man of sin, pursuant to um, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, all right, that's the time period that we're living in right now, and these special men, these elect men, they're departing from this this society right now they're being clothed with this truth now they're following Yahweh Shai or I should say Yahweh why Yahweh Shai by way of getting into this book right you know we're trying our best to keep the law steps and commandments to the best of our ability rehearsing the righteous acts you know as it says in the book of Judges 5 verse 11 you know that's us you know keeping up the, the, the high holy days um you know keeping the the Passover so on and so forth you know, that's us departing from this current world, okay? Verse 40, it says, Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white. The white represents purity, all right? Spiritually pure, that is, because we know we're in the flesh, and, you know, this flesh is, you know, filled with wickedness. So this is speaking about our spiritual purity, because it's all about the spirit. It says, um... Which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. The number of thy children, whom thou longest for, is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. Right? And that's a significant point, too, because these particular men, the elect of the nation of Israel, beginning with the 144,000, you know, they've been with Yahweh, while Yahweh Shai from the very beginning. All right, and this thing is all about predestination. It tells you about that in the book of uh, Ephesians 1 verse 4, okay? Verse 42, it says, I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the, all the rest, and upon every one of their heads, he set crowns. Like I said, this is what today, this is what you would call um, a coronation, okay? So this is actually what's going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. This is what our forefather, the prophet Ezra, is seeing in a vision. So this is yet to happen. This is yet to take place, okay? Let me read it again. It says, and in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads, he set crowns. And was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. Okay, and this is referring to our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, the Lamb. Okay, the ultimate sacrifice. This is Yahweh Shai placing a, a crown upon, you know, each of the brothers that was going out there on the houses and byways, teaching this word. Okay, sincerely, you know, diligently. Um, it says, verse forty-four. So I asked the angel, and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto, unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing, which is, you know, the ways of this life, this current world, if you will, 
and put on the emu, right? Which the word emu means to never die, right? And you don't die by getting into this truth, right? Um, spiritually, that is, you know, as it's written, you know, um, how does it go now? Um, speaks about how our Lord, you know, seeking our Lord, our Shai, you shall have everlasting life. Well, I'm paraphrasing, I can't, you know, find the scripture right now, but it's in the New Testament, you know. Maybe I'll put it up in post production, but you brothers know what I'm speaking about. Anyway, reading on it says, and have confessed the name of the power. Now are they crowned and receive palms, and the palms represent victory, all right? And these are the same individuals, these are the same men that are, that are going to be victorious, not only in the kingdom of heaven, you know, being a part of the elect, you know, having that everlasting, having that everlasting crown, but they're also going to receive victory over um, Esau Edom, which is the so-called white man, and his beast system, right? They're going to receive victory over the beast, um, his image, and his mark. Okay, the beast referring to um, the ancient pagan Roman Empire that's come back today in the form of NATO, the EU, and America. You know, primarily America over here. You know, that's where uh, um, this is basically the the leading force of the beast system, America, Babylon the Great. And then you know his image is going into this current society that we're living in, which is pretty much a spitting image. This current society is pretty much based upon the ancient pagan Roman Empire. And the mark, all right, as you should know by now, because great moves have been breaking it down for the longest. The mark of the beast is referring to the implantable microchip, which Esau right now is getting ready to make mandatory across the globe. But the elect are going to have victory over those things, okay? So that's why they're going to have palms in their hand. Verse, 40, verse 47. So here's the point, and this is pretty much where I'm going to end this le end the lesson, Lord willing. It says. So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of the Most High, referring to our Lord and Savior, who we know as Yahweh Shai, right? It is the Son of the Most High, the Most High being the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, whom they have confessed in the world. So again, bear this in mind. The prophet Ezra is seeing these brothers being crowned. Why are they being crowned? Because they diligently was going out there in the world, as we're doing right now, on the highways and byways, out there on the street corners, teaching this word, prophesying this word, prophesying against Esau Edom, condemning Esau Edom, bringing the elect into this truth through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, by baptizing them, immersing them in this truth. Okay? This is why Ezra is marveling at these men. Okay, let me read it again. Verse 47, so he answered and said unto me, it is the son of the Most High whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. All right. So the question I pose to the congregation that's out there in IYC, Israel United in Christ is, what name are these men standing so stiffly for? Right? Does it make sense that they're standing stiffly for the name Most High or God, which is even, it's not even a name. Those aren't names, right? God is a Greek title. Most High, that's a title too. Okay? Um, Christ, that's another title. That's a Greek title. Jesus, are they standing stiffly for the name Jesus when there isn't no letter J in the ancient Hebrew? When we understand that our Lord is a Hebrew from the tribe of Judah. So he was given a Hebrew name. So what name are these men standing stiffly for as it pertains to the time that we're living in right now? What's the name that they're standing stiffly for? What is it? As it says in the book of um, Proverbs 30, chapter 30, verse 4. Um, what is his name and what is, what is his son's name if thou can tell? All right. So that's just my two cents concerning this matter. You know, um... You know, law willing, it evokes food for thought. You know, law willing, I brought out some type of edification here. You know, um, hey man, you know, Yahweh Bashma Shai is sending forth stumbling blocks out here. And it's very important that you Israelites out there uh, discern what's going on, who's who, you know, concerning the prophets.
that are coming back here, all right? Because, you know, as it says, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 32, all right? The spirit of the prophet is subject unto the prophets, okay? Now, just in the days of old, you had the, the true prophets, such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, so on and so forth. But also amongst these prophets, <laughs> you had false prophets, right? Um, a false prophet that comes to me right now is the prophet that came up against Jeremiah, all right? When you go to the book of Jeremiah, the 28th chapter, and you read from verse 8 on down, you read about um, Hananiah, the prophet, all right? And he was a false prophet, so... Hey man, you Israelites, you know, you better, you better, you better get down with the program, man. You better pray unto Yahweh Bashna Hashem to give you that, that discernment, man. You know, because there's a lot of stumbling blocks out here. And the Lord is the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and Yahweh Shai that's actually controlling the whole chess pool there, all right? So, again, that's my two cent. Lord willing, you brothers out there were edified through the Spirit. I want to give all praise, honors, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Makar Kodash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, the men that taught me the truth of the Bible through the Holy Spirit, and Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash Bakatham, to the elect of Israel. Shalom.